Silver hit record demand in 2015, but had its third annual deficit, 60% larger than 2014. These are just a few of the findings of this year's World Silver Survey, which was released today. Joining us now in studio is Thomson Reuters GFMS Erica Ranestad, who worked on the report alongside the Silver Institute. Erica, good to have you here in studio. Yeah, it's my first time, and it's always a pleasure to uh, see you. <laughs> absolutely. Well, let's talk about some of these findings. I want to ask you if anything uh, stood out for you. You know, we saw record demand and lower supply, uh, which set up the market for its third largest deficit on record. What's the come for silver here, Erica? Uh, so I think the, the biggest driver for the deficit um, expanding was the huge increase in coin and bar demand. Um, Last year was a period of, uh, once again, bargain buying in the coin and bar silver market. And that's kind of following about two to, th two to four years of bargain buying. Um, last year, we saw coin bar, in, in coin bar demand increase about 24%. Right. Um, and that was on the back of, first, you saw an acceleration of coin purchases, um, mostly among the national mints. And then when the U.S. Mint announced um, depletion of inventories in July, you saw a huge, uh, in a, in a, an increase in that acceleration of demand. And that actually spilled over into bar demand, causing a huge increase in bar demand as well. Well, let's look at silver prices. It seems that, you know, fundamentally, the picture has really changed here. Are you optimistic for the metal here? I am. There's, I guess there's two fundamental factors that are going to support prices um, better than they've supported prices in the past few years. Um, first off, uh, in the past two or three years, you saw bargain buying in, uh, in the investment uh, space. Um, this year, we've seen a, a lot more safe haven buying that has resulted in pushing prices higher. So that's distinctly different than buying silver uh, as a bargain opportunity. Um, and kind of just to... Uh, quantify that, uh, we've seen a, a huge reversal in ETP demand, uh, exchange-traded products. Um, uh, holdings are up about 35 million ounces uh, this year through April. That compares to about an 18 million ounce decline last year. So um, you've seen an increase in ETPs, and you've also seen uh, a huge increase in money manager interest in uh, COMEX futures and options, uh, which is much higher on a net basis relative to all of 2015, really, except for the first quarter. So so you spoke about support for the prices, but what's a risk here to the silver market? Uh, well, I would say that first off, uh, because safe haven buying has been the primary driver uh, for higher prices in the past four months. Um, if that interest waned or kind of reduced a bit, that could really uh, bring the price a little bit lower. Um, we do expect there'll be bouts of profit taking, and um, we do think that you know interest and in safe haven assets could reduce a bit, but we actually think that it's going to still be supportive of prices. Um, the reason being is uh, this year, the market is really focusing on developing economy growth. And in the past few years, especially post-financial crisis, the financial, uh, the developing economies were really the driver of global growth. And this year, the market's really questioning that. Right. So I think that the safe haven interest is going to remain strong this year. So what's your forecast for quarter end of the year? So we expect the silver price to average $15.90 this year, and that's going to be defined by an overall upward trend in the quarterly average price. So um, we've seen prices reach uh, uh, highs last week, right? and we expect that uh, trajectory to continue through the, quarter, or the fourth quarter of this year. All right, so what do you think that says about the global economy? I think that you know the fact that safe haven demand has uh, re-emerged in the market, I mean, that factor really was not uh, present in the past two, three, four years. Um, that says a lot. And the fact that that has come back to the market says that these, these factors, these concerns are, um, are serious. And um, we can only expect that if indicators improve, that would be a surprise to the market, and that could... Uh, reduce safe haven interest, but I don't th I don't expect that indicators would really suggest that. All right, Erica Ranestad, thanks so much for coming by and talking about the silver survey today. Always a pleasure. And thanks for watching this edition of Kitco's Gold Report and Silver Report. We'll see you tomorrow.